Welcome back to Computer Engineer Plays. We're back for another episode of Turing Complete. If you've never seen Turing Complete before, it's a game about building a computer from scratch. You go from building small little circuits and basic logic gates all the way to assembly, programming, and full computers. It's a really fun and creative game and it teaches you a lot about how computers work in the process. When we last left off, we had just completed the byte or level, starting to move from single bits to 8-bit or byte logic. Next up is byte not. Our previous model of brain size being the main predictor of intelligence was naive. Tool making and usage is key in the early evolutionary stages of developing intelligence. Therefore, the number of arms on a creature is clearly the main predictor of intelligence. Did you know that there are sea creatures from your planet with four times as many arms as you and they are doing better in tests? So I guess we got some squids or octopi that are uh, beating us so far, so we gotta catch up. So the challenge on this level is just to not each bit of the byte input. Invert each bit. Now this should be uh, very straightforward. All we're gonna do here is take a 8-bit splitter, or a byte splitter here, and our 8-bit maker, and literally all that we have to do is set up a bunch of not gates going from each bit. So uh, this is gonna take a second, but I think it should be just this easy. Okay, I think this will do it. All we're doing is just negating the input of each bit here. So let's go ahead and run this and see if that does it. And there it is, level complete. Next up is adding bytes. Add the two input bytes. Each output bit in the output should be a result of the addition of the corresponding bits from the inputs and potentially a carry. If the result does not fit in eight bits, turn the output carry or the ninth bit you can think of it as, turn it green, turn it on. Finally, there's an input carry as well. This is useful for chaining together byte adders to add larger numbers. You can think of this carry as adding either zero or one. Use this hint if you get stuck. Okay, I'm gonna not use the hint yet and we'll see if we can solve it without the hint first. So we have a input toggle here. We have the actual input bits. So we have two numbers that are being added together and this is gonna be our input carry bit here. So let's go ahead and go to our 8-bit logic here. We have the 8-bit switch that just toggles a value. We have our 1-bit stuff here. Uh, I guess we don't get our 8-bit not gate that we just had. Okay, so let's start by splitting these inputs into their individual bits. We can access the individual bits. Then we also have this carry in right here. And for the carries, I'm gonna mark them a different color. So the carries are gonna be this uh, green color here. In order to add these together, we need to use these full adders. You'll remember in a previous level we made these full adders, and these take in two values plus a carry in bit, and it will output a normal output value as well as a carry out value. So we'll have our normal output up here and also a carry out right here. And just to confirm this logic, let's just test it real fast. If we were to take this, make sure that uh, we're using the correct places here. If we're to take these and toggle, let's toggle the one bit has a one. If we toggle another one, that's a one plus a one being added, which is going to toggle this carry output bit. And if we toggle also the carry in, then it's one plus one plus one. So that's going to toggle one and the carry out. That's correct. This would then feed into our eight bit maker here. We're going to make the result and it's connected to our result right here. This output would go here into this 8-bit maker. So this would be the result of adding the ones bit place with both of our input bytes. Now, if we want to chain this together and keep going, we're gonna need to add another adder here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the output of this carry out, and it's actually gonna be the input of the next adder. We're gonna connect up now the twos place, add that together. The previous ones place addition, its carry out is now the carry in of this new one. Then we have our output going into the twos place, and we're gonna have our carry out bit right here. So we're gonna have to do that for all of these places here, link them all up together. So give me just one second, and I'm gonna connect all this up. Okay, I've gone ahead and connected all of these inputs with these adders that are chained together. And then our final thing is that this final carry out is going to be our carry out for the whole byte. 
So let's put that into our output carry out and let's test a couple numbers here. So if I add two together, I my output is two. And if my carry bit was in, then my output is gonna be three. So that looks good to me. If I just have the carry in bit, the output is one. And then if I was to toggle one of the large numbers, like 128 here, add those together, that's gonna equal 256 which is bigger than you can represent in eight bits. The maximum value you can represent in eight bits is 255. So the carryout bit is gonna be set because 256 is greater than the maximum capacity of a single byte. So that looks right to me. So if we go ahead and run uh, the simulation here, let's make sure that the solution is valid. And there we go, level complete. This has unlocked the eight bit adder that's gonna add two bytes together. All right, let's keep moving on. Okay, I have two choices here. I could either go for the negative numbers or I could go for input selector. Uh, I think I'm gonna do negative numbers. To know the difference between things, you need subtraction. To get subtraction, first you need negative numbers. This level introduces two's complement, the most common representation for negative numbers. Here, the highest digit is negated. For bytes, this means the eighth digit changes its value from 128 to negative 128. You finish this level when you get to level three or beyond. So this is like the previous binary eraser level where it's gonna time us and we have to make the number that it's asking for in binary. So now we're getting into two's complement. This is how basically every computer represents negative numbers. So let's see how I do at this. I'm a bit rusty. Ready to race? Go. One in signed binary is just one. 15 is eight plus four plus two plus one. Okay, I'm, I made it to level four. So that means I pass the level. Key takeaways. To go between negative and positive, you flip all the bits and add one. If the highest bit is positive, the value is always negative. The byte adder you built also works with signed numbers, and there is still only exactly one way to write each number. All right, while we're on the negative numbers train, let's go ahead and do the signed negator level. Okay, so it's given us this number format here, so it'll treat numbers as either signed or unsigned. So taking the input as signed, where the eighth bit is negative 128, make a component that takes a number and negates it. For example, four negated would become negative four, and negative nine negated would become nine. So, oh, we have new folders here for math and logic under our 8-bit category. Okay, so our first intuition might be to just put everything through a not gate, right? Wouldn't that negate everything? Well, almost, but it actually gives us negative two instead of negative one, which is what we want here. And this has to do with the way that two's complement works. If you want to negate, we actually get a need to add one to this value. Okay, so we need to add one to this value that we're getting, but how do we add one? Well, we may need to make the value one in 8-bit logic, and we could just use this 8-bit adder here. We won't have any carry in. We'll pass this into this adder here. The output will go into our output right here. Right now we're not adding anything to it. So let's use this always on and pass it into the ones place. And we'll use this always off and pass this to everything else. So this value right here should always be the value one. So let's go ahead and add this and we get negative one. So we've negated our output. Let's try a couple of other numbers to make sure we're on the right track. If I take four, I get negative four. If I do 36, I get negative 36. 100, I get negative 100. That looks all right to me. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, that unlocked the signed negator. Okay, it looks like the next level in this tree is locked. So let's go over to this input selector level. Even though he did not pass our test, we decided to keep the dog. Unlike most earthlings, he is fluffy and follows simple instructions well. We might want to team you two up since you complement each other's shortcomings well. Well, a dog is a man's best friend after all. Input selector. When the bit selector input is negative, output byte A, otherwise output byte B. Now it's calling this level input selector. Uh, these are also going to be known as uh, multiplexers. And all that basically means is that we're going to take two different inputs and we're going to pass one through to the output. And which input we pass through, if it's this green input or if it's the purple output, it's going to depend on this other selection input right here. So it's going to select between passing the green or passing the purple output. Okay, well, I don't think this one is going to be too difficult. Let's think about some of the tools at our disposal here. 
In our 8-bit collection of components for this level, we can use the 8-bit switch. Now, if you remember these switches, how they work is that the input gets passed through to the output only if this top input is also turned on. So right now, if I were to pick a value here, say four, the output on this cable is gonna be zero. This output is zero right now, but if I were to toggle this input bit, then it allows this value to pass through to our output. So I think we can make this work by simply connecting two of these switches. So let's make another 8-bit switch for our second input here, and then let's also connect this up to this wire here. Now we normally can't connect two outputs to the same wire because we'd have two different signals potentially driving, trying to drive the same value or a different value on the same wire. But if you have this gray node right here on the output, that means it the game lets you connect two to the same wire. And it lets you do that because it assumes that both of these outputs are not gonna be turned on at the same time. So now what we need to do is take a not gate and let's go ahead and connect the opposite of whatever value is going to this switch. The opposite of that value should go to this switch. If one of these is on, the other one is off. So let's just pick a different value, two. Because the selector is turned off, it's gonna be passing the second value through to this wire. If I was to toggle this, it would turn off this switch and turn this one on. So now it passes four. This level is saying that when the bit selector input is negative, output byte A, otherwise output byte B. So we got this mixed around a little bit. So that means that the output of the negative wire needs to go here and the output of the positive goes here. So now when the input is not turned on, it passes byte A through. When the input is turned on, it's going to pass byte B through. So let's run this. and I think this works. All right, and that's completed and it unlocked the 8-bit mux. That's that word I was saying earlier, a multiplexer. Okay, next level is the bus. This level has two byte inputs and two byte outputs. Your goal is to copy from one of the inputs to one of the outputs. The first bit input determines which input you should copy from. The second bit input determines which output you should copy to. Check this hint if you get stuck. Okay, this is definitely a lot more complicated. So we have two different inputs here. We got input A and we got input B. I'm gonna call it A and B, to say zero and one. And then we have two different selectors here. This first one is gonna tell us which of these inputs we're gonna copy from. And the second one here is gonna tell us which of the outputs we're gonna copy it to. Oh, it only gives us not gates and 8-bit switches and a limited amount of these. So we don't have access to the normal gates that we have access to. So let's just go ahead and put these out here. We're probably gonna need to use them all and it gives us two NOT gates. Okay, let's start with how we're gonna select the input. So if this top one is our input selector, then let's take the principles that we learned in the previous level and just apply them here. So let's connect both of these inputs here and they're gonna go to a common output wire. They're gonna go right here. So if this input is, is negative, then we're gonna select this first input here is gonna be the input that we pass through. So let's take one of these NOT gates and connect that here. So if this is negative, it's going to pass through this first input. Now, if this is toggled positive, then we need to pass through this second input. So now this is selecting between the two different inputs. It's passing either two for this first input or 64. And we essentially just need to do the same thing for our output. So now we're gonna choose where to pass to the output. So let's put these 8-bit switches here, and these are gonna just connect up to our output. Here's our two, our output switch, or our output uh, selection here. If we connect up our output, if it's negative, then it needs to output to the first output here. So let's take our NOT gate, and this is going to control our output here. So let's connect this through. If this input right here, our output selector, if it's negative, then it's going to allow this output value to go to the first output. Now, if it's positive, it should allow the output to go to the other output, the second output. So we need to also connect up our output here, it needs to go to the second output. So if I toggle this output selector, now it should pass the output to different outputs. So that looks good to me. We can choose which input gets passed through and we can choose where it gets passed through. I think this solves the level. Let's go ahead and run and make sure.
All right, level complete, the bus. Okay, looks like the next one up is saving gracefully, but I think that's gonna do it for this episode. If you're enjoying this, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below, have you ever done anything like this before or seen a game like this? Or if you've done this sort of puzzle before, like digital logic, uh, tell me where you did that. Are there any other games like this that I might enjoy? Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.